Land Rovers and Range Rovers have fantastic reputations off-road, but the reality is that most buyers will be getting stuck in traffic rather than mud. Which is why a plug-in hybrid version of the Evoque makes perfect sense. We're going to explain why in this review, and we're gonna tell you if this new plug-in hybrid version of the Evoque is any good or not. Before we start, hit the subscribe button so you can see all of our other reviews, and go to whatcar.com to save more than 2,000 pounds off the Evoque. Now, we'll talk about the hybrid stuff later, but let's first remind you why the Evoque is such a brilliant car. And really, it's this interior as a whole that is a real standout feature of the car. And that starts with the driving position. Now, Land Rover has a brilliant reputation when it comes to driving positions. It's one of the best in the business. And the Evoque is yet another example of how to get it absolutely spot on. So there's loads of adjustment in the wheel, and in the seats, the seats themselves are really comfy too. You're also noticeably higher up off the ground than you are in other rivals in this class, like the Audi Q3 and the BMW X1. Plus you have a really good view out the front and at the back, yes, you've got a rising rear window line and quite a shallow rear screen, but you still have a better view out the back than you do in lots of other rivals. And on top of that, you get front and rear parking sensors and a reversing camera as standard. And you can also have a rear view mirror, which at the flick of a switch, morphs into this digital display that gives you a direct camera feed out the back of the car. And that's quite useful to have if you've piled up bags and it's blocking your view out the back. This infotainment system is also impressive. It's the latest PIVI Pro Jaguar Land Rover system, which you also find in lots of other cars like the new Land Rover Defender. It's a 10 inch touchscreen and you can actually control the angle of it depending on your preference and your driving position. The screen itself has really nice graphics. It's quite simply laid out. Some of these icons are a bit small and it's not quite as snappy in its responses as you'd like, but you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, although they're wired rather than wireless. Below this, you also have another touchscreen panel down here for the climate controls, and you can use these dials to control different functions by pushing them in, like the temperature, the seat heating, and the fan speed. So it is pretty good, but it does still require a bit more attention than if it was just easy to see, easy to touch physical controls. And also all of this isn't quite as intuitive as the equivalent touchscreen infotainment and climate controls that you get in the BMW X1, but it is better than the touchscreen in the Volvo XC40. But it's the quality of the Evoque interior that really stands out here. So everything feels incredibly solid. The materials are really nice. It's really well put together. If you go for a leather interior, it's a very good quality leather, but Range Rover also offers what they call a vegan alternative which is this eucalyptus non-leather interior. And it's a no-cost option on most trims, and it's also really good quality. So no matter what Evoque you go for, no matter how you want to spec it, you're going to end up with one of the best interiors in the class. Now, the Evoque is small by Range Rover standards, but in the family SUV class, it is quite spacious back here compared to its rivals. I'm just under six foot. There's no issue with legroom, no issue with headroom either. I can sit up straight and still feels quite airy and spacious back here. Plus, it's quite broad, so you'll be able to fit three passengers side by side back here easier than you would in other cars. But in a Q3 and in an X1, you can get rear seats that slide and recline, and you don't get any of that here. But as amazing as it is inside, the boot isn't particularly impressive. We managed to fit five carry-on size suitcases into the back below the parcel shelf, but that's compared to seven in an XC40 and eight in a BMW X1. But in the Evoque, you do have a bit of underfloor storage here to put the charging cables, and also the three rear seats can fold down individually. And when they're all down, it makes a basically flat extended load bay, which is really useful. It's also worth knowing that going for a plug-in hybrid version of the Evoque or a fuel-powered version of the Evoque makes no difference at all to the boots. They have exactly the same. But now let's explain a little bit more about why going for a plug-in hybrid Evoque can make a lot of sense. So, Plug-in hybrids have a fuel-powered engine, but they also have a battery which powers an electric motor. You can use the engine and the battery together to help boost your fuel economy. Or you can use just the electric power from the battery to travel for a certain amount of miles without having to call on the engine to help at all. That's all great, but the problem is when the battery goes flat. Yes, because then the fuel economy is really not good at all until you can charge it up again. 
With a flat battery, you've got a heavy car powered by a small fuel powered engine. So in summary, plug-in hybrids are best on short journeys. If you've got a 15 mile round trip to do, then from a full battery, there's every chance you can do the whole thing on electric power alone. And that's where FEVs really are brilliant. And it can be particularly brilliant for the Evoque because you see so many in big cities where presumably the vast majority of the trips that the car does are short. But if you don't keep the battery topped up and you do massive miles, then they really don't make any sense at all. Just get a diesel. Let's take a closer look at the makeup of the Evoque plug-in hybrid. So the P300e gets a 197 brake horsepower, 1.5 litre, three-cylinder petrol engine, but it also gets a 108 brake horsepower electric motor on the rear axle. And that makes it all-wheel drive. But if you're in pure EV mode, then you can't have all-wheel drive. The claimed electric range is 34 miles and the claimed fuel economy is 143.1 miles per gallon. But really those figures are quite misleading because in real world driving conditions you're more likely to get something like 25 miles using electric power alone from a full charge. And as for the fuel economy, if you do a relatively long journey, you'd be doing well to achieve more than 40 miles per gallon. There are a few different modes to determine how you want to use the battery. So for example, you've got hybrid mode, which lets the car decide when it wants to use electric power on fuel power. You've got EV mode, which forces the car into pure electric driving if you've got enough charge. And then there's save mode, which obviously, as you'd imagine, saves the charge in the battery so you can use the electric power later on in your journey. But aside from the range and the fuel economy, the performance in this car is really impressive. It'll do 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.1 seconds, so it's the quickest Evoke in the lineup, and it really does feel quick from behind the wheel as well. And the transition between electric power to fuel power is really smooth too. But what about charging this thing up? If you use a 50 kilowatt charger, which is one of the ones you'd find typically at a motorway service station, then you'll go from 20 to 80% in around 20 minutes. If you want to go from empty to full from a home 7 kilowatt wall box charger, then it'll take around 2 hours, and from a 3 pin plug, that same charge will take 7 hours. This is a really nice thing to drive. It's definitely one of the best riding cars in the class, and even on 20 inch alloys, it's really controlled, really well settled. And yes, the P300e has the least forgiving ride in the Evoque lineup, but it's by no means overly firm or uncomfortable. It's still really good. You can pay extra to have adaptive dampers, but really it rides so well as standard that there's no real need to pay extra. The handling isn't class leading, but as you'd expect, its off-road ability is definitely right up there with the best around. With a higher ground clearance than most rivals and a 600 mm wading depth, it is comfortably better than an XC40 or X1 off the beaten track. This plug-in hybrid Evoque actually has a different automatic gearbox to the other Evokes in the lineup. So it has a new eight-speed unit, which is apparently five kilograms lighter than the nine-speed unit that everything else gets. And it's really impressive. Shifts smoothly, doesn't feel sluggish. It's difficult to catch it out, even if you want a quick burst of acceleration off the line. So all in all, it's good to drive. It's great inside. So if you do want to buy an Evoque, how should you spec it? When it comes to the engines, this P300e is really impressive, but it's also really expensive. So if you're a company car buyer and you can take advantage of the low benefit in kind tax payments that come with plug-in hybrids, then this is the Evoke for you. But if you're a private buyer and your budget doesn't quite stretch to this, then you might also want to consider the still really impressive, but cheaper D200 diesel. Of the trims available, we'd go for our Dynamic S. The higher trim levels send the price soaring, but our Dynamic S is still relatively well equipped and keeps the price down. It's also the cheapest trim you can get with the P300e. You'll still need quite a bit of budget left to dip into the options list though. 
there are quite a lot of options when it comes to the styling of the Evoque. And of course, it's all subjective, so it's up to you what you want to spend your money on. But there's only one standard solid paint option. So you are probably going to want to spend extra on metallic paint. And that's priced from £705 up to £970. And if you do like this kind of blacked out look that this Evoque has got, then that's part of the black exterior pack, which costs £670. Similarly, if you like the black contrasting roof that we've got, then that is £650. Another subjective choice, but this eucalyptus non-leather interior is really nice and a no-cost option. You'll want to spend £510 on the movable touchscreen because everything below our Dynamic SE trim gets the same touchscreen but recessed into the dashboard and it just doesn't look anywhere near as nice. You'll also need to spend another £510 if you want a full digital driver display and £700 if you want a head-up display. But if you want all of that, you should probably just go for the technology pack, which also adds the lower climate control touchscreen panel. But once you start adding packs, the price really does shoot up. So you might be better off going for our Dynamic SE trim, which gets all of those screens, but not the head-up display, as standard, and adds in an electric tailgate as well. But whether you do go for S or SE, you'll still need to pay £1,275 if you want the driver assist pack, it's worth considering if you do a lot of motorway miles because it adds blind spot monitoring and adaptive cruise control. If you regularly carry passengers in the back, you might want to consider spending £205 to be able to adjust the temperature coming out of these vents from back here. If you do go for the P300E plug-in hybrid, then you should definitely go for the home charging cable so that you can charge from a three-pin plug. But it's a shame it's not standard and it costs 300 quid. It might be the smallest Range Rover, but you still might want some extra help parking it. A 3D surround camera costs £585, and it's very good. Other things to know about the Evoque are that, yes, it is expensive, but it will hold on to its value better than all of its rivals. And it's also a very safe car. Safety experts Euro NCAP gave it the full five stars in their safety testing. But if there is one major downside to Evoque ownership, it's likely to be Land Rover's terrible reliability record. It finished rock bottom in our latest reliability survey, so if you do buy an Evoque, let's hope that you don't have to call on the three-year unlimited mileage warranty too often. Aside from the questionable reliability, if you are one of the many potential Evoque buyers living in the city, this P300E could make a lot of sense. It's got a great interior, a comfortable ride and a decent range. To save money on an Evoque, go to whatcar.com and hit the subscribe button so you can see all of our reviews as soon as they go live.